Hey guys, today we will continue with modules and hierarchy. Let's look at the first problem. In this exercise, we have a submodule called mode A, and we have to connect it with our top module. So we have to connect the inputs A and B to the inputs of the module and also connect the outputs. We have to create an instance. So our we create instance of mode A, we call it instance zero and then we have to connect inputs and outputs and how we can do this is the mode a has two inputs as first two arguments and output as the last argument so we have we can connect input a and b to the inputs and out out as the output next problem is called connecting ports by position we can either connect them by position or by name. So in this case, we'll do position. We have again mode A here as submodule with four inputs and four outputs. And in the declaration here, you can see that the outputs are the first two in uh, arguments and inputs are the last four. So we will create an instance of this submodule mode A instance zero. And as first two arguments, we will put out one and out two and then a b c and d inputs next problem we have to do it by name we have the same sub module with four inputs and two outputs but this time we have to do it by name and so we have to get the names of the outputs and inputs we have out1, out2, and in1 to 4. And again, we will create a sub we will create submodule called mode A. We will call it instance 0. And now we will do it by name. So we can do dot in1 A. We can copy this. So here we are connecting uh, the inputs of the submodule to the to the inputs of the top module, and then we can do dot out one and out one and dot out two out two, and you can see that I have switched the order. So even though the the module has the out uh, out ports. As the first two, you can, if you do it by name, you can uh, reorder them as you want. So I have put the inputs as first and outputs as the second. This problem is called module shift, and we have submodule called my DFF, D flip flop. And we will initiate three instances and connect them as follow as uh, shown here. And what this will do is this will delay the input D by three clock cycles. So let's uh, initiate three instances of my DFF. Instance zero, and it has. It has clock as input, D as input, and Q as output. So here we have clock and then D. And we will have to create uh, two wires, wire Q1 and Q2 for these two connections. So here we put Q1 and copy it two more times and this one this will be this one will take us input q1 and get uh, show the output on q2 and this will take as input q2 and assign it assign the output to the final output q and we have to name it 0 1 and 2 Next one is very similar to the previous one. We also have three instances of DFF, but the input is eight uh, bit vector this time. So I will reuse the code from the previous assignment. 
And the only change we have to do is this wire has to be 8 bit vector. So 7 down to 0. And these are called my DFF8. And then we also we, we have this MOOCs, which selects the output queue. It uses cell input as the select option, and it ch chooses between one of the among the four options. And we will use this syntax to create the MOOCs. Always. This syntax is very similar to VHDL process, if you are familiar with it. This, these parentheses have sensitivity list inside, which, select, which, uh, may, uh, which makes the code inside of this run only when one of the variables here changes. If we have asterisks here, that means whenever, whenever any of the variable that is used inside will be changed, or any of the vector. And we will create a case here. And this case will have cell as uh, option here. And now we need all the all the uh, values of cell. So that can be 0, 0. And in that case, the Q output will be our input D. And we can copy this three more times. And here it's going to be one, two, and three. So if the value is one, we select, if the value is one, we select the first uh, DFF output. If it's two, then the second. And it's, if it's three, then the last one. We have to also create Q3 wire, and this will be the output of the last DFF. And here Q1, Q2, and Q3 will be selected as output. This problem is adder, and we add A and B, which are 32 bit vectors. So we will use submodule called at 16. At 16 instance 0. And we also have to create uh, some of the so outputs of the at 16 submodules. That will be wire. It will be 16 bit, 16 bit, some zero and some one. And we also have to create this C out wire, C out zero. So instance zero will have input A, input B, then carry in and sum and carry out. So A, and we will select just the fifty, just first first uh, sixteen bits. Then B also first sixteen bits. Then we have carry in. In this case, carry in is zero. One bit with the value of zero. Then we have our sum and carry out sum zero and carry out zero. Let's copy this one more time. So this will be sum one. We don't need this carry. This is not assigned to anything here. And this will be 31 down to 16. 31 down to 16. And here as carry in, we will have carry out from the previous one. And then we assign sum the output here and that will be sum one and sum zero combined i have to change the instance here Mm. 
Now it's correct. This problem is identical to the previous one. We also have two submodule submodule instances of at 16 here, but this time we don't get at 16 finished because we have to create submodules within this at 16. So what we'll do is I will use the code from the previous assignment for our top module. That's identical, but we also have to create these submodules called add one. And these submodules are just one bit adders. Here you can see circuit for one bit adder. And that's what we will try to implement. You, it has two parts. The first part with the two XORs will give us the sum of the A and B one bit inputs. And the other part will give us the carry out. So let's implement this circuit. First, we'll do sum part. So assign sum is equal to, and that will be XOR between A and B. And this will be XOR with C in. And then we have our uh, assign our carry out and our carry out. Let's look at the circuit again is end for XOR between A and B. And then it will be end with carry in. And then we have end between A and B. And these two ends will be or. So carry out A XOR B. And this will be end with carry in. And this whole thing will be or with A and B. Let's look at if we have if we have done this correct. Yes. And now it's finished. Next problem is select carry adder, and this adder is improved version of the adder we have implemented in the previous problem. And the improvement is in that we don't have to wait for the carry out of the first adder to start computing the next adder, the, out, the sum of the next adder, but we compute both options with carry in zero and carry in one, and then when this is uh, computed, we select one of the one of the outputs from either with the carry in zero or carry in one. So if carry out here is zero, we select this adder. If carry out is one, we select this adder. So let's try to implement this now. We will need four, uh, three instances of adder sixteen. That's how this is now at 16. Instant 0. And this instant will have A, first 15 bits of A and B as inputs. And carry in will be 0. So A, 15 to 0. B, 15 to 0. Then carry in will be 1 bit 0 with value zero. And then we have our outputs. So this will output sum and get our carry out. So let's create two wires. Wire, which will be vector uh, with size 16. It's gonna be called sum zero. And then another wire called carry out, carry out zero. And these will be our outputs. We can copy this adder and create two more instances. Instance one and instance two. And these instances will take the upper uh, upper bits or the higher uh, higher bits of A and B. So 31 to 16. Let's copy this here and here and here and the carry in here will be one and the carry in here will be uh, will be zero and one here 
and we will need two more outputs so some some one and some two and then our carryouts we don't care about these so now we have to select between the two outputs and we can use this notation this simplified notation i will create one more vector called sum high and what we will do is assign sum high will be equal to and we will choose based on carry out zero and if it's one then we will choose sum one and if it's zero then we will choose sum two and then we assign the final output and that will be combination of sum high and sum zero so we have created three instances as shown here the first one takes carry in zero the second one also zero and the third one one so zero zero one and then we assign our outputs here zero one two we chose between one and two we saved it in sum high and then the output is combination of sum high and sum zero and we have a mistake here because i forgot to switch these two because if it's if carry out is one then we have to select this output and if it's zero then this one now it should work success let's continue final problem we have implemented adders but now we will do subtraction so this top module will be capable of adding and subtracting and it will be chosen based on the input sub if it's zero then it will be addition as we have done before but if it's one then it will be subtraction so we will subtract a from b and how this how this is done is the carry in for the first adder will be sub and also b will be xored with the input sub this will negate b and add one to it which will result in subtraction if you want to know more about it there is a wikipedia page on this uh, in this problem and you can go and check it out if uh, if you don't fully understand how this work so now we will implement this this will this is exactly as adder one in the previous assignment so i will copy this code and here we have to do some changes so the changes that we have to do is we have to as the carry in for the first adder will be sub and also we have to create uh, another wire that will be xor between b and sub let's create this wire it's gonna be 32 bits long and it's gonna be called b xor xor sub sign and we will copy we will create vector that is 32 bits uh, 32 bits uh, of copies of sub and we will xor it with b so that will give us the b xor sub we will put it as input for the address and also here we have to change this from zero to sub and that's all now it's now it's capable of subtracting and also adding and the last problem is successful that's all for today we have finished modules hierarchy and next time we'll look at procedures thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye